My name is Roland Bock. I'm Head of Development at PPRO Financial Limited. I'm also the author of uh, SQL 11. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that uh, as, part of the, uh, as part of the examples. I was also author of uh, my news project called KISS Templates, which, besides the name, doesn't have to do anything with what we're talking about. It's, it's about text templates, not about C++ templates. All right, so the talk is about pruning error messages from your C++ template code. So um, what is it not about? Uh, it's not about uh, trying to filter out um, template error messages from the compiler output after the fact. Right? It's about going to, to the root cause, uh, trying to eliminate as much as possible. And what got me started was uh, some years ago, an article by Eric Niebler called Why Template Error Messages Suck and What You Can Do About It. Um, this, um, this site expresses C++ is, uh, I think, more or less dead now. Uh, the link is dead. Uh, when, you, uh, f when you go to, to Eric's site, I think. Um, but you can still find the article at archive.org. Uh, and it's, an, it's a cool article. At the time, I didn't really have much to do with uh, template programming. So, um, well, I, I read it. It was interesting. But I didn't do anything with it. And then two years later, I started um, with SQL++11. And SQL++11 is a is an embedded domain-specific language for SQL in C++. So that means that you can um, write stuff like this. You can basically um, write SQL expressions in C++, or something very close. Somebody who can read SQL can probably read this. So in this case, um, assuming that you have some object that represents a table, in this case, foo, um, you can select a bunch of columns from this table um, with some condition and um, send that to your database, um, loop over the results. And the results, friendly enough, also have, um, the result rows also, friendly enough, have uh, aptly named members with reasonable types. So you can um, have the full C++ compiler machinery to tell you when you're doing something wrong. In in pretty much all respects. So this library will tell you at compile time um, whether you're forgetting a table in the from, for instance, or if you're comparing uh, incompatible um, columns, or um, I don't know, if you're, if you're missing, mix, mixing aggregate uh, functions and non-aggregate functions, stuff like that. So um, the compiler can tell you all about that at compile time. Well, that's the compiler. Um, as you can imagine, this, um, this is heavily templated. It involves deeply nested templates. And um, it also means that if you don't pay attention to what you're doing, um, you can get horrible error messages. Like in this case, um, let's say in a version from about a year ago, um, it's a harmless looking code, so you select from a table T, column alpha. And then you have one tiny mistake. Out of, out of um, um, what, what you did before, maybe, um, earlier on, uh, was you, you wrote SQL expressions in C++ as strings. So the user here, um, well, wrote the table as a string, or as a uh, character um, array here. So um, that's not expected, and the, um, and the library expects a table object here. So what it does um, is it answers with horrible error messages. And I, don't, I haven't shown them here, just the, the summary. It's 18 kilobytes of error messages in 100 lines uh, for, G, for GCC, uh, the current GCC, and um, 38 kilobytes in 200, or almost 300 lines with Clang 3.6. Um, for all Windows users, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have access to a reasonable um, version of a, uh, of a Windows, uh, of a Microsoft compiler. All right, so um, that's the problem. 
we want to get rid of that, or at least reduce it as much as possible, because that's unusable. And in this talk, I will, um, I will explain a, a, a range of techniques, which uh, go from easy to explain, hard to, hard to use, and hard to explain, hard to use. And there is no silver bullet. There's nothing that really helps in all situations. But um, if we take a look again at, at this thing here, uh, the differences between the compiler, uh, one of the first things that you can do to reduce the, the pain is, or you can support compiler developers because compilers make a difference. And if you stumble over something like this, then, well, you can tell the, the other teams that, hey, the, the other compiler is much better, so why don't you improve your stuff? And give reasonable examples to, so that they can, um, can work with that, for instance. Also, the, um, the library itself makes difference, so code quality uh, matters. If you stumble over a library or over something that you, that you happen to do, and um, the library and the compiler in combination produce horrible error messages, well, consider it worthy a, a bug report towards that library. Okay, that's important, and um, it's also very important because this, this bug that I showed you on the, on the previous slide is something that I didn't find. It didn't even occur to me that somebody could ever do this. Um, didn't cross my mind, so um, I was relying on a bug report there. Okay, who knows the best way to avoid template errors? <laughs> right, don't use templates. And no, it, I'm not kidding. Um, and the, the reason why I'm saying this is um, I've seen so many developers using templates just because they can. Right, it's it's C plus plus. God damn it. We have to be generic, uh, or whatever. I mean, there, there are many reasons. But yeah, many people just use templates because, well, they, they want to or they think it's cool. Um, so make sure that you really need them. Um, make sure that you really need to expose them, even if you use the templates in your own library. Maybe, um, maybe a simpler interface, a non-template interface, could be totally sufficient for what your library is offering. Um, maybe you don't need compile time polymorphism. Maybe you need, maybe runtime polymorphism is totally sufficient. Um, in that case, is, well, forget about the templates or at least don't expose them. Or you can um, maybe also hide templates um, behind inheritance. Oh, this is something that, uh, that I'm using. Um, so, this is a struct that represents a table in, in this library. It's generated code. It's generated from the, <clears throat> um, from the data definition language. Um, and the code generator, well, does the work anyway. So why, why not let it generate explicit types um, and then hide the, the, instance, uh, the, the template that does the real work for it behind inheritance. This way, it's just a type. It doesn't have a, it, it's not a template. Right? And if you knew what's going on in that table, um, you would agree that this is a very good thing. Okay. Um, and this is just to illustrate the, the difference. This is if, and one of the, one of the lines from that previous error, um, if you don't do uh, hide the, the uh, table template, this is if you hide it, and uh, what you still can see this this repetitive stuff with SQL PP column, uh, and then some something. Um, the columns also are uh, are templates. Since we know those in advance, at least in in most cases, we could also hide them uh, behind inheritance, and then it would look like this. Okay, so. Um, sounds easy. It's actually pretty hard. I haven't gotten to, uh, to this column thing yet. I had three attempts. They all failed. Um, I need to try it again but because I wanted this, this short. All right. So don't use templates if you, have, if you don't have to. Um, the next thing is uh, try to avoid recursion. Um, 
especially since uh, C++ 11 with these veridic templates, um, every introduction that I've ever read about uh, veridic templates says, well, the key to variadic templates is use recursion, right? Take one element from, from the front, uh, if, do something with that, and then forward the rest to the next instance, okay? Um, but you wanna avoid recursion because uh, recursion is slow in the compiler. It's rather limited because you're basically building a stack of templates and uh, that stack size is limited. Um, and it leads to dreadful error messages. Okay, so I think there is a whole talk about uh, for each, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. So um, we want to write a function that calls a unary function um, for each of the following arguments. Okay. The introductions always pretty much stay the same. Okay, you have one, uh, one closure element that um, has no arguments beside the function. Okay, that does nothing. Uh, you have then this recursive thing um, that takes at least one argument plus a rest. Uh, it evaluates this argument and then calls uh, this call for each function again, right, with a rest. Okay. Okay, let's test that and see what happens. Uh, so we write a test function um, and then call for each with this test and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ten. And, well, ten happens to be something weird, right? I don't know, this is a very, very um, contrived example, um, but this is stuff that happens, okay? Now, Clang says this. That is annoying, right? It's always the same, basically. Uh, there's no real information about this. And it goes on uh, uh, some uh, few lines below this. Uh, Okay. Okay, that's annoying. But that's recursion for you. Now, there, <clears throat> there is a solution to that. You can, uh, with this little trick, you can uh, basically instantiate uh, an array of ints with, uh, with, the, 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 with a function call, comma operator null, effectively uh, initializing it with a list of, of ints. This is one of those versions at which I, I think uh, also it guarantees that the, that the order of execution is like the order of the, of the arguments. Yes? Doesn't that require you to use initializer list? I'm sorry? Doesn't that require you to use initializer list if you want them to be in order? So I might be wrong about that. Are we? He's initializing an action, yeah. so he gets the guarantee. Oh. Right, so um, if we do the same test with that, cool. I mean, that's, that's nice, short, and easy. Um, okay, and in uh, C17, hopefully, I'm not sure if that's now really guaranteed, but hopefully we, go, we will get fold expressions and then it will be much easier and nobody will really, ha really have to think about what's, what's going on. So fold expressions will be cool. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, um, GCC in this case, uh, much better. GCC detects the recursion immediately and basically produces in all cases the same error messages. Very nice. Okay. Um, so we're going to use or this um, this uh, recursive. Uh, sorry, this um, this for each call will appear in, in some places. Uh, another thing that will appear in some places is a non-recursive all. So we want to uh, at compile time evaluate if a an arbitrary number of bools is are all true. All of them should be true. Okay, so we want to do that. Right. And uh, I'm not going to show the, the non, uh, I'm not going to show the recursive version because um, everybody can do that. The non-recursive version is uh, for some people, some people a bit, uh, sorry, it's for some people a bit surprising 
So we have a, this logic helper that's just a class that takes spools. And um, in, in our alt template, we uh, compare this instantiation of the logic helper with the, ar with the arguments with uh, another list that has the same number of arguments, but everything is set to, tr is set to true via this comma operator. Right? Everybody get that? Here, this, this thing here with a, with a dot, dot, dot um, produces as many trues as you have arguments. And if this instance of logic helper is the same as this, then everything is true. Okay. Depending on uh, how many how many bools you have, um, this is orders of magnitude faster than than the, any recursive version that you can think of. All right. Okay, and uh, I hope I got it right. This this the C plus plus seventeen style with fold expressions. Yes. Uh, quick thing on twenty five. Uh, you could actually be even cooler here. This is amazingly elegant. Uh, is same if you get double colon type, that is the integral constant that is same represents. So you would get the true type or the false type. You don't need to form it again, integral constant equal. You could just say is same double colon type. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so the, uh, the comment by Stefan was um, that I don't even need to, to wrap the, the is same thing in the integral constant. Um, I can just use it directly. Cool, yeah. All right. So um, next thing is about um, uh, a, a tool that appeared in C++11 uh, that helps to generate useful error messages. So what we've, all we've, what we've seen so far are techniques to reduce the amount of error messages, but um, they are still compiler-generated error messages. Um, static assert gives you human-generated error messages. So for instance, you have some kind of class, and uh, you want to, not very elegantly here, but um, you want to reduce uh, or um, you want to um, constrain the the template argument to something that is integral, and you can just use a static assert and say, well, if it's not integral, then okay. Right. I also use this in partial specializations. Um, so, for instance, I have uh, a typeset, and there are meta functions on it to join typesets. Right. Um, so, L and R have to be typesets th for this to make sense. So. The, the good case, the golden case, is, well, you make a partial specialization. Um, you see that, well, OK, these are typesets. And then you can uh, make a new typeset from, uh, from the parameters from that. The question is, um, how to proceed? Well, one way is to just leave it at, as that. Um, then the user will get, uh, if, if they uh, instantiate a joint typeset with something that is not a typeset, they will get weird error messages, something like missing implementation, which is a bit annoying because they don't know, did I, is it a library error? Did I forget to include a header file? Is it my problem? They don't know. Right. So I would like to give them a static assert which says that L and R have to be typesets. Right. The question is, how do I do that? Um, because, I mean, Basically, this, these three question marks, they, they have to be false always when this is instantiated, because whenever this is instantiated, it's obviously an error. Um, but I can't put false there, because the compiler would uh, fire the static assert immediately. Also, I don't have a type trait for, for type sets. Uh, I mean, it would be easy to write, but I don't, I don't want to, because I have so many things that, are, that have similar situations, and I don't want to write type traits for all of them. So um, what would be cool would be a just-in-time falls uh, whenever this get, gets hit, um, it suddenly appears and, um, and then fires the static assert. Um, one thing that I do is um, I have this nice type that is it's called wrong, uh, can be instantiated with anything uh, and 
for a human, it's pretty much clear that this is always false. For the compiler, not so much, because the compiler has to uh, think of partial specialization or, uh, or forced specializations or whatever, uh, so it cannot deduce uh, that this is really always false. It has to wait until you really instantiate it. Okay. So, and it would look something like this. Um, that is the, the bad case. So in this case, L and R aren't typesets. And then we just use wrong uh, with, the, with the type that we're currently in. Take the value, static assert, that's it. Make sense? Okay. Good. And again, the, the uh, golden case. Right. We can also use static assert in functions, of course. And um, as it so happens, uh, the, the code that we were testing in, in the leading example uh, has a from method that, uh, that delegates the, the whole work to another function. That was because there is another from function that has slightly, uh, slightly different arguments. Um, and I wanted to move everything into one implementation. The implementation contains a static assert and then continues with some, with some more static asserts and doing the real work. Now, um, in, the, in the case that we currently had, um, it starts reasonable, right? So we're instantiating with something that is not a table. Static assert fails and it says at least one argument and is not a table in, or a join in from. Blah. Okay, that's reasonable. Um, then you can see the, the call stack, which is at least one level too much because we have this indirection into this uh, implementation function. And then we see the, uh, the place where it all originated, um, the, our, own, our own call. So far, so good. But um, then the compiler carries on because there is another static assert uh, which also fires because it's not, a t it's not a table and whatever it tests now uh, assumes that this is a table, so uh, all, all hell breaks loose. And uh, so it continues to carry on uh, even though static assert is a non-recoverable error. So I mean, I, there's not really a point to that in my eyes. But anyway, so this this attempt that I, that I made um, when I ad added this um, static assert in that function didn't work out too well, right? So the static assert is too far away from, from the call side. The compiler continues to run on like a beheaded chicken, right? No chance of survival, but let's keep running. Um, what I... Um, what I had removed some, some, some time earlier um, because of bad experiences was if I have a, a static assert in return type, this gets even worse, right? Um, and these uh, 100 or 300 lines of code, uh, of error messages turn out to be like a thousand or so. Um, horrible. Um, and yeah, that's, that's I think, that's it. So it didn't turn out too well. So let's try something else. Did anybody not stumble over enable if during this conference? Or otherwise in their life? Okay, yeah, everybody knows what enable if is good. That's good. All right, so um, I tried this. So um, try to eliminate the function from the, uh, from the overload set if the arguments aren't all the tables, right? Now, Clang says that's cool. You try to, uh, to call from with a column in this case, uh, not, a, uh, not a table. There's no matching member. Uh, the candidate template has been disabled by disable if. Okay, cool, that's beautiful. GCC, on the other hand, the compiler that um, was so so cruel in the other examples uh, now says, well, there is no matching call. 
candidate, blah, 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 and well, just give me all kinds of details that I don't want to have. Um, then, yeah, then carries on. And this really goes down into the basement and beyond. Right. So, yeah, compilers make a difference. Right. So, then at that time, uh, well, Concept Slide were, uh, were a big topic. I uh, heard talks about that. Um, so, oh, okay, let's try that. Okay, so let's assume we had a concept for a table, which is simple because we already have a type trait for a table, so that's, that's easy, writing that down. And then uh, I wanted to use the, the really terse notation saying that, okay, I expect a, any number of tables here. Okay, and then if, if those are given, then do whatever is required. Okay. Now it turns out that um, GCC, which I think is the only compiler that does support uh, concept slide anyway, um, even to until today, thinks that this is illegal. Right. This here. In certain contexts, not in all contexts, but in the context of this library uh, being in some uh, very CRTP template function with, again, very templates, um, that's illegal. Saying that invalid use of pack expansion expression is complete bullshit. And, it, and again, it raves on for many, many pages. So concepts slides are not really usable, but well, let's at least try again uh, what it would look like if, if only it worked. Um, so I tried to, the, tried to use the requires form of, uh, exp uh, of adding concepts to a function. Okay, we are trustworthy all again with the requires. Okay. And now GCC says something useful. Right. It's a relatively short error message and uh, it says, well, no matching function call, constraints not satisfied, and it lists the constraints, and that's fine. Okay, so that's, that's good. And um, if it weren't for the bug, I'd try to, so this is not, not uh, taken from a, from a live experiment, but this is what I think GCC would generate if it hadn't this bug um, with the uh, with the parameter expansion, um, then it would probably produce something like this, um, which is uh, in the end rather similar. Uh, so a short message, constraints not satisfied, and um, very very detailed actually saying that um, table of const jar putter that is not satisfied. Okay. Right. So that is that is really not bad. But it's not ready yet. Right? You can't, at least in context like mine, and I mean, we're talking about heavy template motor programming, you cannot use it yet because of all these, all these bugs, and there are tons of bugs, and one, the one that I reported because of this is just one of, of many currently. And there are even um, bugs in the, uh, in the TS uh, that I know of. Okay, so what we've seen so far, these, uh, these methods, well, static assert gives you speci specific error messages, but the compiler continues and spills. Um, and actually, the static assert in the function body is, is too late if you have problems in your return type. So that's annoying. Enable if gives you um, ugly code, I think, or at least, well, yeah, in my perspective, enable if is really ugly. Uh, error messages that come out of it are ugly. Concept light are, have, has nice code, often de halfway decent error messages, but it's not really yet ready yet. And um, the developers, not only from, for GCC, but um, for all compilers, really need your support because there are so many cases and nobody can think of any, everything, I think. Um, and you need really good named concepts because otherwise people will look at the error messages with the concepts and have no idea what, what the compiler is talking about. Um, so you have to have many concepts probably. Okay. All right, so let's combine messages, uh, methods. Um, first thing I wanted to try was um, 
enable if and static assert. So we start out with the same thing as, as before, enable if, and um, then the, um, the good case. And add a counterpart that takes care of the, of the bad case, right? So if this is, um, if not all of these arguments are tables, then, well, this kicks in. Put a static assert here. And, um, oh yeah, and, and, and the return type is something different because in, uh, it, this makes sure that the return type doesn't give us trouble. And uh, the error messages, well, it says void is not a structure or union um, when, when we want to co continue in our uh, expression here. Um, that is good. The static assert fires, that's also good. Um, so that's not bad. But um, the, the problem is that you, um, that you blow up your interface and right? you add more functions to it, functions that you actually don't really want to have. Um, personally, I don't like that very much. And one, one other problem that cannot occur here because we um, have um, very templates that catch any combination of arguments, but you could easily construct something um, where you have um, very, very variants uh, of arguments that don't catch everything. And then, based on what we've seen before, um, all hell will break loose, because then suddenly everything is removed from the overload set. Uh, all of these are disabled by, by something, and then um, you have tons of error messages. So, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't really like um, this enable if approach. So another version is um, that you do static assert and tag dispatch. So what does that mean? Well, you, um, you enter the function, you do the static assert. Um, and then you call an implementation function. So you don't do anything else in, in this function. You do you call an implementation function. And you use the, the check that you used earlier on as a type for, um, for dispatching to one of two functions. Uh, one takes, as a first argument, the, the true type, uh, does something useful in that case, and the other um, takes the, uh, the false type and doesn't do anything. It's not even implemented because, I mean, there's no point. If that's called, then everything's bad anyway. And it returns uh, in, uh, in SQL++11, it returns a bad statement, which is, well, you could also return a void. It doesn't make much of a difference. All right. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so um, and that means, well, we get um, the, we get first the, the error message that, well, with this return type, we, we cannot do anything of the, of the rest of the statement. Okay, that's, that's okay. can live with that. And then static assert fails, well, at least one argument, blah, 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 is not a table. Uh, and then one more line, we're done. Okay, so that are, these are all the error messages that we now get. Right? So we reduced hundreds of lines of error messages with this just very simple technique of static assert and, and tag dispatch um, to three lines with a very clear error message. Okay. Then there are people who say, well, but static assert is not SVNA friendly, and it isn't. I mean, if you run into a static assert while evaluating something for SVNA, well, you're, you're in bad luck because it's a hard error. You cannot, you cannot recover from that in a SVNA. Uh, and if it's in, in an unevaluated body of a function, then it doesn't even fire while you're evaluating this. Um, so some people don't like this approach because of that. But I'm saying if, if you if you or some, some user wants to do Sphene on your function calls, then, I mean, they can, they can do it on, on the return type. Cool. That should be documented, of course, what's happening in the error case. Or uh, they, you could document the check. You should do that anyway. Uh, you can document the check, and then they could um, use that, that check uh, in their Sphene expression. So I think that's okay. Um, and important for things like this. You notice the, the, the decal type from blah. 
do not use C++14 return type deduction. Does anybody know why? It doesn't spin A. It doesn't spin A, <laughs> yeah. Because, well, you run into the static assert then. Because the compiler has to evaluate the body of the, of the function, and then boom. All right. Good. Um, oops. Sorry. So um, another question um, that is not related to this example directly, but uh, to the same library is, now what if I have several different conditions that I have to check, and even unknown checks that I have to perform? So unknown conditions? Well, that's weird. But um, turns out that this is um, that this is a real normal case, in, in at least in, in this kind of library. Um, so we have the a database mock in in the library that is used to test all these expressions and see if, how they interact with databases. And um, when you give that a statement, then it tries to call a run function on the statement with the database itself as an argument and does some ping pong anyway. Um, and we call this um, with this harmless looking piece of code. Expression is correct. Um, then we will get something like this. It suddenly says, static assert failed. Where expression required? Because this library, um, well, it, it's my library and I designed it this way, so saying that there has, always has to be a where expression. Even if it's where true, indicating that you actually wanted to select everything. Um, but if it's not there, I'm assuming that you just forgot. And you wanted to select, I don't know, two elements, maybe. So, um, and this has proven helpful in many cases. So this is a, a good error message, but then, then it carries on and says, well, it's somewhere in a um, nowhere type, um, and then you see this swallow that you've seen before, and some, somewhere in check consistency, and that is inside statement, uh, and that is in inside runtime methods of statement, um, and that is inside the mockdb, and that is um, called by our expression. Okay. So again, and the and these individual lines uh, are much longer, so they they don't just end there; they carry on. Uh, I don't know to the balcony. So, so this is actually hurt, hurting when you see that. So, but <clears throat> since we're here and we're just seeing the statement, um, the question is: How do we figure out what what to check here? Right. Um, at this place here, it's pretty much unknown. So let's take a look at, at an SQL plus plus eleven statement, how that looks like. So that is a veridic template, um, and for select, it looks something like this. So you have, um, and for an, for an empty select, I should say, so something that you start with, you start your expression um, building with this. It's something that, um, that contains no width. It has an indicator that, hey, this is a select statement. It has no flags, no columns selected, no from, no where, and so on. Uh, nothing in there except for these types. And all of those, um, yeah, and, and, the, and the database operator doesn't know how to check all, any of those in detail. But the, the individual components of this uh, of this SQL statement, they know what to check. And that's where this, this error message came from that we saw. Okay. So the first thing that I tried was, well, let's move, let's move um, or let's collect the, the information whether our uh, expression or could, be, um, could be run through the database, yes or no. Let's collect that from all the clauses, right? So uh, we use this implementation of all uh, and combine that with a run check value from each and every individual clause, okay? And then 
in our uh, database implementation. We use static assert on that, saying that, well, if that's false, then the statement is inconsistent. And then we use tag dispatch to, um, to carry on with the rest of the work um, if, if the statement is okay. Right? So in the true case, we do what we did before, and in the false case, we don't, just don't do anything. Okay, cool. So that gives us a very short error message saying that steady assert statement is inconsistent. And then you see this, and you say, well, um, select alpha from, I don't see anything, and there is no problem. So if I hadn't told you that, um, that, this is, that the problem is the, that the library expects aware, well, I don't know, you probably would have filed a bug report or dropped the library for good, or I don't know. Um, so this is absolutely not helpful, even though it's short. So we want to get the specific error message back. And for this, I, I'm using something that I call portable static assert. Um, that's basically, I, for each of the static asserts that, uh, that I have in the library, um, I now create a type um, with some reasonable names so, can, so I can find it again. Um, contain, containing a, um, a an indicator whether it's it's a it's a good or, or bad case, um, and a static function, uh, a templated static function that whenever it's called fires a static assert, a very specific static assert. Then, okay, and of these I have I don't know. 30 or so in the library. And I also have the OK type. That is something that is called consistent. It just contains the true, saying that, hey, this is everything OK. And the function, uh, the same function, um, but it doesn't do anything. Right? And then uh, in the same manner, just slightly more complex, um, in, in which we've uh, collected the, the bool information earlier on. We're now collecting um, these, um, these consistency representation classes with some function that's not really very well named. Um, get first if um, takes, a, um, takes a predicate saying that is consistent, uh, is inconsistent, um, and a default value and, and a number of of these uh, consistency classes. And if there is any inconsistent class, it takes the first one. Otherwise, it takes the, the default value, or, sorry, or the default type, the, the consistent type. All right? And then we can use that in our, uh, in our database and say, OK, uh, now we call uh, call this function on, on the run check object. And if it's the consistent case, then this function doesn't do anything. In the inconsistent case, it fires an assert, a very specific static assert. Okay. Make sense? Okay. Right. And the result is one line more than before, but um, because we have to uh, go into this uh, into this helper function in the in in this um, in this inconsistency class, um, we get a very specific error message saying that where expression is required. Then we see this this call stack with the with this helper function. Um, then our call. So that is short and helpful. Okay. So. Are we there yet? Well, any time you see such a question in, in presentations, the answer is no, of course. Um, no, we're not there yet because um, what I did here, uh, I was calling run check on, on this statement object. Um, and if this is not actually a statement, then, well, maybe run, uh, probably run check isn't even available. So this will cause horrible errors. Um, so what we have to do is, well, we have to write a wrapper for that um, that basically does exactly the same as all the other 
uh, of these uh, portable static asserts. It checks um, if the thing is in fact a statement. Um, and yeah, so in, in the default case, it yields um, this static assert runtime or prepared, um, which basically says um, this is not a statement if it's found. Um, and the, the good case is in case this is a statement, then um, it just yields um, the, the run check of the statement itself. Okay. And um, with that, now I think at least everything is harmless. Um, and we can, if we call, uh, for instance, with the, this, uh, this function with a string, then we would get again a three liner uh, and not something that blows our screen. Uh, just saying that, okay, connection cannot run something that is neither a statement or a prepared statement. Very short and precise information. Okay, now we're done. At least with this library. And as, as I said in the beginning, there is no silver bullet, so whatever I presented, it's working for, for the stuff that I do. I think there are, um, much of this is uh, also applicable for, uh, for other libraries as well. All right, so my suggestions in summary for reducing template error messages is um, well, so co support compiler developers. I think that's really important. Uh, support library authors. Again, very important. Uh, library authors rely on, on feedback because otherwise they cannot improve their library. Um, try to minimize the exposed templates. Um, try to minimize recursion. It's hard to wrap, their, wrap your head around that. I know. Um, perform parameter um, validation at the API order, so as close to the user's code as possible. Document your validation conditions, also very important because people will rely on those. And use static assert with great care. So don't use static assert in return types. Uh, combine it with tag dispatch so that the compiler cannot carry on with all kinds of nonsense that you know is incorrect um, because you just made a static assert to, to say so. Um, and I think these portable static asserts are helpful if you have to collect conditions from several areas of your code. And last point, experiment with concept slide. I think that is also very important because um, that is going to change the way that we are writing libraries in the future. And uh, it's important that, uh, that the language gets this right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have questions? OK. Um, well, I mean, especially the, the recursion stuff, that, which is, oh, okay, thanks for the hint. So the question is, um, do these um, techniques impact compile time? Um, the recursion stuff um, does impact compile time uh, dramatically, um, depending on the number of uh, arguments, of course. The um, Most of the other things, uh, I'm not really sure. I know that um, that this um, the, these portable static asserts um, put a considerable additional load on the compiler in in terms of what they can really digest. Uh, I don't know about compile time, but uh, I've seen GCC and Clang barf several times when when. Um, the code was arranged in a, in a certain fashion, and just by rearranging it slightly and twiggling the code, uh, having basically the same functionality, so for a human, it's, yeah, well, it's the same, but um, then they suddenly don't crash anymore. Um, so, yeah, stuff like that makes it more complex for the compiler, of course, but um, I haven't done intense measurements for that. Um, I've, I haven't seen anything uh, where it says, well, okay, suddenly it's uh, twice as slow or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so 
Is there C14 things that you're using here, or, or most of this works with 11? Um, the library is, um, is C11 only. Um, so, yeah, well, the, there are a few things where it indicated that it's C17 uh, in, in, in the slides. Um, but the, the code examples and the technique that I showed are all C11. Yes? Uh, could you go back to 45? I really like the portable static search, by the way. Cool, thank you. Uh, did you 40, that or did you pick it up from somebody else? Um, I, I invented it myself, that, which doesn't say that nobody else did it before. So, okay, I'll credit you. Yeah, same with the with the all, by the way. This, um, this oh, with the, the comma true. Yeah, yeah. It was a, a cool trick. Yeah, that was a result of a discussion on the boost mailing list, and we we sent versions back and forth, and then I don't know, suddenly light bulb. Um, I just want to mention uh, when uh, tag dispatching. Mm -hmm. Here, this is correct, but you could also just say true type and false type. Take the tag by value, slice it. I mean, if the thing derives from true type or false type, who cares? It's an empty struct, so just slice it. That's by value. Uh, there's no reason to take it by contra. Okay, okay. All right. So the the comment by uh, Stefan is, um, yeah, take take true or false type by by value. It doesn't make really a difference. All right. Everyone's everyone's died or <laughs> forty eight. Okay. I'm so glad that you found that you saw the the page numbers. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, here you're mentioning skin A in the return type. Uh, there's four places where you can put need lib, uh, return type, a fixed argument type, default function argument. But the usual best one is a default template argument, uh, mostly because it works all the time and it gets it out of decluttering up to the return type. So unless there's a specific reason to prefer one location, um, I'd say recommend not doing the return type. And that works in 11. It doesn't in 14 magic, the spinning. But you couldn't do it in 03. You need the default template argument on the function um, argument. OK. So, but all right, so the, the suggestion is to use a default argument in the, in the template, but um, does that work with, um, with variadic templates? Yes, it does. Um, and in fact, it works even in a variadic constructor. You just put it at the end. It's not deduced. Huh, yeah. okay. Oh, okay, thank you. I didn't know that. So the, um, the comment is that I could use a, uh, a default type at the end of the list uh, for, for doing Sphene. Um, and I wasn't aware that this works with variadic templates. But Stefan says, and I saw several people nod about that. Yes, yes, it does. Cool. Oh, cool. I will try that. All right. Then, thanks again. <laughs> Have a nice evening. <laughs>